Welcome once again to Sanctuary of Reality, my comic review series. Today we explore Church and State Chapter 8 in Cerebus Issue 59, the first story of which is titled Carol E. King Reads. And the Aston man of sophistication and class notices the Carol E. King's Reeds shop. Finding all that is sold in the store are Reeds, those incredibly cheap romantic propaganda novels Weishaupt has been having Cerebus write. It seems that the intended audience of women aren't the only ones interested in checking them out, though for entirely different reasons. The man checks out The Prime Minister and the Hussy and finds a passage filthy. What will be his reaction? This is a short follow-up to the previously established Prime Minister and the Hussy brought up in issue 57. It's harmless, but it's a nice callback to something I completely forgot entirely about and thought that was dropped. Reads themselves, though, will become more important in later books of the series. As you'll see more of these little novelettes as they become a, 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 a a common form in the world of Cerebus of literature. Next is a two-pager titled At the Club One Afternoon. At a club one afternoon a man discusses with another man about the time he met Prime Minister Cerebus. What will be his reaction? I got a chuckle out of this one but that's really all. It's just kind of like filler. It doesn't really serve a point that I can glean from it. I guess if you want to see what two upperclassmen think of Cerebus as PM, then it has its place. Next is Memoirs. The Regency Elf reads on governing, including the newest chapter, which is about responsibility. What will be her reaction? Her reaction is actually a mirror of the Countess's reaction to having read on governing back in issue 53. I see it as a metaphor, really, for somehow some people, especially at the time, viewed Cerebus. The funny bits are beloved especially, if not seemingly exclusively singled out as the best parts, while the desire for more of the book is usually requested by those who take the time to read it. I'm sure there's something along those lines with the intention of this particular tale. Next is Note. It's a torn up note from Lord Julius to Prime Minister Cerebus, congratulating him on his wedding to Red Sophia. Why is it torn up? The additional signature at the end holds the reason. Typical of Lord Julius to pull a stunt like this. I don't want to spoil anything about the identity of the extra signature in the end there, but you can probably already guess who it is. And this knowledge of Cerebus's marriage will actually set things into motion for the character that will be important for their next appearance later on in Church and State. Next is First Impression. Cerebus struggles with his newly tailored pair of pants, far too tight on him, as President Weishaupt introduced him to Mrs. Tinsdale Clyde, a former Cyrenist now heading his latest commission on the subject of Cyrenism. Will Cerebus make a good first impression? This is probably the most standout and memorable of this issue's anthology of tales, and it's done so really with only one joke and just two pages. It'll be referenced again in like two issues. It's downright hilarious actually, and involves a feature of Cerebus I often completely forget about. Next is tree planting. To celebrate Mother's Week in East, Phil Gates makes an introduction to Mrs. Henrot Gutch, the Prime Minister's mother-in-law, on the occasion of planting a ceremonial elm. But when Phil Gate makes a joke at her expense, how will the perpetually foully mooded lady react? We don't see Phil Gate again for quite some time, like a hundred issues. Talk about a long recovery time. It's, this is a cute and quick one. It's a bit predictable, but it is fun. You gotta enjoy Mrs. Henry Gutch. Next is Approved By. 
Cerebus signs orders and proclamations sent to him by President Weishaupt. Can he figure out a way to make it go faster? This is sort of a slice of life two-pager for his current time as Prime Minister. It's not bad at all. It's just a little short and straightforward. Finally, the real meat of the issue is this last tale, Rough Pope. President Weishaupt meets with Bishop Powers. Seems the line of Surya, the Pope of the Western Church, wants a suitable Pope for the Eastern Church chosen for them by Weishaupt. One who isn't a Cyrenist, Kevilist, Illusionist, etc., etc. Weishaupt subtly taunts Powers while reminding him of the separation of church and state that makes choosing a Pope not his problem. Powers is enraged, but the president stands his ground coolly. What is his secret to maintaining such a level head in the face of tremendous pressure? We finally get to see Weishaupt drop his guard at the end. It's a very human moment from a character that always seems to be on. This is an important story for what it sets up later. Uh, Bishop Powers will become a recurring presence in the church for the rest of church and state, both one and two. So overall, this is another mixed bag of tales, but it at least covers a lot of ground. It's a very nice variety of stories. Next time, it's time to focus on the women of Cerebus's life.